Now, if you clicked on this video, you are already a professional videographer, someone who is making money from shooting videos. Now, if you happen to be a beginner, I've already made a ton of videos for you. There are links down below in the description, whether that's how to get started or how to get clients. But the truth is, is that when you do this professionally, there is a different set of issues or hurdles that you have to overcome that a beginner really doesn't have to deal with yet. And there's certain pieces of advice that I would give to a beginner that I wouldn't give to a professional and vice versa. So I wanted to make a video to sort of start the conversation. The comment section is open for you guys to add your own tips as well, but I wanted to start the conversation and give some of the advice that I wish somebody would have told me once I started doing this thing professionally. Now, so quick context, cause I know some of you guys are probably like, well, who the heck are you? And why can't you tell us what you're doing? Well, I've been doing video production for over 10 years. I've worked on some pretty big projects, working in the industry, as well as creating content directly for social media. And so I've sort of seen the industry change quite a bit. I was here before there were gimbals. I survived during COVID and I'm still here today, keeping making videos for a living. So I wanted to share a couple of the tips that sort of has helped me be able to navigate the highs and of course the lows to be able to actually continue to do this full time as a living. So let's hop into that first tip. And a massive thank you to Editor's Keys for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm sure you've heard that saying that it is better to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And when you're a beginner, that is absolutely true. It's very easy for you to just kind of like be able to do a little bit of everything so that we can get as much experience and get on in as many jobs as possible, as well as just be open to being hired on more particular jobs. But the truth is, is that as you become a professional and you get further into the journey, I actually recommend that you do become a master of one. See, the truth is, is that when you are more of a jack of all trades, it's really hard to hire you because it's not really sure where you fit in and how much value you provide in those areas. Because once you start getting to bigger and better productions, you need someone who knows a specific role very well. I mean, these are jobs like a first AC where you want someone who knows how to actually pull focus, that you're looking for somebody who specializes in that format. Also, when it comes to lighting, sure, you may know how to open up a softbox, but are you a gaffer? Are you someone who actually knows how to sculpt light and be able to build out the different things needed in order to properly diffuse light and actually create the scene that the director or DP is looking for? I know that the idea of being able to do a little bit of everything is super helpful. And I've even given this advice when it comes to navigating some of the low points of being able to, you know, flex into weddings or flex into corporate or even do music videos or whatever it might be. But the truth is, is that even though, yes, it is beneficial to be able to do a lot of different stuff, you still need to find time to become a master of one particular area. So I'll tell you how this has actually helped me. I am a red shooter. I own a red V Raptor. I have a red Komodo X. And I am pretty much known in the Houston area as being the guy who can answer questions when it comes to red, as well as run productions that have to run on red. I've been able to get certified and being able to shoot on the reds. I've also been able to master the actual Red Control Pro app. And so this means that not too long ago, I was actually on a set that needed three reds and they called me in to DP the thing because they knew I was a master of running these red projects. Kind of a additional step is I've also been really diving into the world of virtual productions. Again, mastering that skill set. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that I have global shutter cameras. And so being a master of someone who can actually handle virtual production projects, whether that's on an LED wall or green screen, and working with these high-end cinema cameras, it allows me to get hired out for those specific projects. It definitely makes my job much easier when it comes to people asking me, well, what do you do? I can tell them the thing that I'm a master at, but if they say, oh, well, we're really looking for something else, then I can obviously choose to flex into that area if I need be. And the truth is, is once you're a master of one thing in particular, you can also charge a lot more money for it. All right, the next tip I have for you is gonna sound like slight contradictory to tip number one, but it will make sense, just trust me. See, the thing about working as a professional videographer is that your business is almost 100% client-based. And sometimes there are things just out of your control that can sort of disrupt your business. And this is something that I personally dealt with during COVID. See, when COVID happened, I had, I think like close to maybe $30,000 on the books ready to make. Uh, and then in a matter of a couple of days, it all just sort of evaporated because COVID shut everything down. And this can be very detrimental if you don't set up this next step. And that is to add in a client-free business model. 
So what I mean is that, yes, if you are a professional videographer, you should have your business based around clients. I mean, obviously you're a videographer, that's how it works. But you should start slowly building a client-free business model as well on the side. And the way that I tell most creators to do is to just build a YouTube channel, start a podcast, or do something in the media industry. The reason being is that you already have the skill set. Obviously, you're a professional videographer, so you already have the skill set in order to do it. But then also, you can sort of build it in a way where if your clients were to go away, you would have something to fall back on or at least coast on for a little while until your clients came back. So for example, here on my YouTube channel, I make content which allows me to monetize said content and I'm able to make money even when I have slow periods within my video business. I also recently started a podcast as well. And so again, I like to sit down and sort of nerd out with my friends about filmmaking and gear and all these kind of things. So we just decided we should really just film these conversations and put them out there. And who knows, maybe we'll make a little bit of money. And that's exactly what has happened. So now I actually have a podcast where we talk about stuff we'd already talk about. And I make a little bit of money on the side, which will help me, especially during those slower months. Now, if you're not wanting to get into the content game, another way that you can go about doing this is with gear rentals. I have a friend of mine who literally rents out his gear all the time. And it's an extra way for him to make money when he's not actually doing work. Now, the way he does this to a company called ShareGrid, but there's a ton of different ways you could do it. Build your own website, do it through Squarespace or whatever you want to do. But the truth is, is that you can actually build something that allows you to make money when you're not out filming or when times get slow. And so there is an absolute benefit to building up this type of a model. I would strongly suggest that you look at your strengths, look at your gear, look at what you have available and try to build a secondary model that can exist if your clients start to slowly just fade away. All right, now I know a lot of professionals are probably always dealing with the issue of like, how do I get more clients? And so here's something that I have found that has made my life so much easier when it comes to getting clients. And that is literally just be easier than the next guy. I have talked with thousands of clients at this point over the years of me doing this. And the one thing that I keep hearing from most of them is just how easy I am to work with. I'll be honest, I don't think I have the most amazing content. I don't think I'm the best videographer. My edits are not the best. My framing is not the best. Sure, I try to make it up with having better cameras, but the truth is, is I don't think I'm the best out there. But the one thing that I think I've always done with all of my clients is I've made the process of working with me easy. One way you can make the entire process easy is just literally get on the phone and talk with them. You know, a lot of videographers are afraid to get on the phone and talk with their clients and hear their thoughts. Also, a lot of videographers don't have a plan on how to actually handle their clients. I've said this multiple times, but like when a client reaches out to me, I immediately try to schedule a call with them, get them on the phone. And then in that first call, I always tell them, I have three things that I wanna hear from you on this call. I wanna hear the scope of the project, I wanna hear the timeline of the project, and I wanna hear the budget for the project. Having a plan makes it easier for the client because truth be told, most of the time when they're reaching out to videographers, they don't have a plan. They're looking to you to help guide them. And so I try to make it easy by having that plan. I even have a plan as far as how you go about paying me. I make that process incredibly easy for them. One of my biggest pet peeves is when you actually talk to a videographer and you ask them, okay, well, what are your rates? And they always say, it depends. And then they can never give you an actual number. Clients hate this, have some numbers in mind. And I'm not saying that you have to like, you know, paint yourself into a hole by giving them a, like an exact price, but you can give them estimates. You can let them know, for example, you know, most of our projects that we shoot fall anywhere between the 15,000 to $30,000 price range. But you know, we've done projects as large as 50 plus, and we've done projects as small as 10 to $8,000. It really just depends on what you're looking for. What you've done is you've helped the client get an idea of some numbers that they can take back to probably whoever the real decision maker is within their business. And if it is them, you've sort of given them a place to start. I know the biggest fear that most videographers have is why well, I don't want to price myself and then underprice because their budget was much higher. But the truth is, is that you should be pricing yourself where you feel comfortable pricing at. And if you are quote unquote underpricing because you thought, oh yeah, this is a good job for me to do at 15,000. And then they come back and say, oh, our budget was 25. Yeah, you might be like, oh, dang, I missed out on 10 grand. But the truth is, is that if you price yourself at 15, you price yourself there for a reason. It wasn't just a random number you pulled out of your pocket. 
And if you are pulling random numbers out of your pocket, well then you really need to sit down and figure out what exactly the cost is for you to do business, how much your time and your value is worth, and what you want to make per project. All right, and the final tip that I have for you, and this is a big one, and that is improve your perceived value. Look, I can't tell you how many videographers will spend a ton of money on gear, lights, cameras, all these things, but they never spend any time making those small tweaks to improve the perceived value that the client has about their company. For example, when I hop on a Zoom call with a client, this is almost exactly what they're gonna see. They're gonna see me shot with a professional camera, I have a professional microphone here, I have a little bit of lighting on myself, and that is because from the time they get on a call with you, they start judging you. From the time they see your work, they start judging you. And so how can you improve the value that they see in you? And that is every time they reach out to you, they should get quality. And that includes phone calls, Zoom calls, and in-person meetings. And so this means dress the part, show up ready to do the work, and this will ultimately change how they see you and they value you. For example, today's video sponsor actually sent me this microphone. This is the SL600, it's from Editor's Keys. And this is a professional USB microphone that you can plug directly into your computer. It's amazing because you have gain control on here. You can actually monitor what you sound like through your headphones because there's even a headphone jack on this guy. And it's even got this little mount here to keep any type of like rustle from showing up in the audio. Doing little things like showing how high quality you can handle a Zoom call will improve the value that the client has when it comes to actually working with you because at the end of the day, if they're like, man, if he can make his Zoom call look that good, imagine what he's going to do for our project. Or think about when you send them over your contract or when you send them over your treatment. If your treatment is really well designed, that increases the perceived value of yours because if you can add value and you can add quality to the small things, they know you're gonna be able to do a good job with their project, which ultimately is gonna make them wanna work with you even more because that's what's gonna set you apart from the next guy who literally owns the exact same Sony camera that you own and has the exact same aperture light that you have and is gonna pull up in a Pelican case just like you. Again, massive shout out to today's video sponsor, Editor's Keys, who make amazing products. As I mentioned, like before, this SL600 microphone that you guys have been listening to to the course of this video. But they also make other things, like they make keyboards that have keyboard shortcuts directly on them that you can use for your favorite editors like Premiere and DaVinci. But then they also make overlays that you can put over top of your existing keyboards if you don't wanna actually go with one of theirs. The one thing I do like about their keyboards though is that they're backlit, they charge via USB-C and the battery life is amazing on them. But as I said before, they make tons of accessories that are great for editors and content creators in general. And if you are a professional, then it would absolutely be worth it for you to invest in a professional microphone like this for your Zoom calls. And so I'll have links to this product down below in the description for you to check out for yourself. But now I wanna open up the conversation to you. I would love for you down below in the comment section to let us know what are your pro tips for videographers? I think a lot of us go from beginner to professional fairly quickly, but then once you get into the professional realm, you're kind of by yourself. So I would love to hear from you guys. What are some tips that you have as professionals? Maybe you don't agree with some of my tips. I'm fine with that as well. I think a good conversation is worth having. So let's have it down below in the comment section. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.